Good afternoon, everybody. We are live. And uh, so I've got a great show for you today. And I'm going to start off with this lovely song. Did Stuart enjoy that? Did he sing along? Did he tap his feet? Is he he's smiling? He's smiling. Let's bring him in. Stuart Mason, how are you? Hello, Hello Ashley. No, I didn't sing along. No. You didn't. You didn't. Well, you were muted. You could have done the very first time I did this. Um, they sang along. And I think, oh no, stop singing, stop singing. So no, if I was singing along, it would quickly empty the room. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming along. Thank you for being uh, a guest on my show. Um, so the very first question that I ask all of my guests is, why did you choose that song? Why did I choose that song? Why did I choose eight days a week? Um, simply because a lot of the business owners and myself, my previous life, it just always seemed to be working eight days a week. I, I was guessing that was the, the, the going to be the answer. Yeah. And, and that, that's the trouble, isn't it? Um, you set up in business because you don't like working eight days a week because you, you know, you're working for the man yeah, or the corporate or whatever. So you set up in business and what ends up happening? Exactly. What did Gerber say in the, that great book that E-Myth revisited? The, the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial seizure where you get fed up working for the idiot boss. So you then become the idiot, the boss. idiot boss. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely and true. And you work eight days a week. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, brilliant. Um, and I do, I do love a bit of Beatles and, and dur during um, lockdown, I've been learning lots of songs. So I've learned quite a few Beatles ones because one, one of my friends comes in every day. And so uh, I, I've, I've learned some Beatles ones for her. So we're going to go right into LinkedIn. So I know you love LinkedIn. I know you're using it quite heavily. Um, so how long have you actually been on LinkedIn, sir? Well, that's a very good question. I've, I was probably an early adopter a pioneer of LinkedIn, um, you know, way back when you would post sort of once a month and that would be considered regular. So I would say it was way back in the ink shop days. So we're probably maybe 15 years. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good old long time. So yeah. you're using it totally different now though, aren't you? Yeah, very much so. Um, I think LinkedIn's matured. Um, I also think LinkedIn's as a, 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 a it's changed as a as a platform now because you used to get it was all business and you didn't put anything up. Oh my god, the, the LinkedIn police would come chapping. Um, <laughs> you know, if you put anything personal on LinkedIn, and it seems to be now it's found a nice balance between a bit of humor, a bit about the person, which I think is very important, but it's still business and it's certainly not Facebook. Um, so yeah, I must admit, I think LinkedIn has matured nicely. Nah, Just like fantastic. myself. Nah. Um, so do you use any other social media regularly? I use Facebook. Um, or is it Facebook? <laughs> I can't quite remember. Um, but that's <laughs> right, that's more for a new business my wife and I have started. So um, we're using Facebook and Instagram um, for that. Um, but I just... I'm not one of these people that just put all the dirty washing out or all the washing out on Facebook. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely incredible. So um, the only things I really put on Facebook personally, you've probably seen this, is just pictures of Monty. And Monty is my two-year-old German Shepherd pup. So that's really all I put up on Facebook, really. But we use it for business. Ah, fantastic. Um, what do you like about LinkedIn? What do I like about LinkedIn? What I like about LinkedIn is the ability to get to, to speak to people. You can get right into people's inbox very easy. You can start building relationships. Um, you know, one of the things we were talking about is about selling in LinkedIn. Selling in LinkedIn annoys me. The best way to sell on LinkedIn is not to sell on LinkedIn. It's about building relationships. And that's what I like about LinkedIn is you've now got a, a very big, growing, maturing platform, um, pretty much unlimited resource with it as well. Um, and I just, I just love the way you're able to engage, engage, and start building a, a really good professional network. Yeah, no, that's, that's brilliant. And um, 
How often do you post your own content? How often do I post? I I tend to post. I'm, I'm off this week, so I'm not really doing too much. But I tend to post daily, and try and mix that up um, with um, really good sort of value content. But most of it is advice. A lot of it's from the book. Most of it's business advice. Um, yeah, so I try to post on a daily basis. Most of it's from the book. I'm going to talk about it, but there there it is. The book. Um, dun, dun, dun. That, that, that there, right, okay, is business books are really difficult to read. Um, but this one, I couldn't put it down. It's it's just absolutely brilliant. Um, so so if anyone's watching, you need to grab a copy of this because it is, it is really, really good. Um, so um, we'll come to that in a minute. Um, how much time do you reckon you spend daily on LinkedIn? I've actually cut it right back now, Ashton, to be honest, because the you ever heard the Parkinson's law? Yes, you're filling in the time that it takes to do the job or something. Yes, yeah. Par Parkinson Parkinson's law states that you never work with Rod Hull and Emu. And if you're a certain age, you remember that one. But Parkinson's law basically states that a job will take however long you give it. Right. So I, I now limit myself really to being on LinkedIn, maybe 15, 20 minutes a day max. Otherwise, it just sucks you in. Absolutely. I, I love the way you just said 15 minutes. That is perfect. I, I love you, Stuart. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, but but yeah, you can. You you can get absolutely sucked in. And, and um, when I was working with accountants um, in, in a previous life, to, to get them to do 15 minutes in a month would have been a miracle. Um, but I did have one who was on it so much, I had to rein her in. So like, stop it, you're doing too much. Get on with the day job. Because that's what happens. You do end up down a rabbit hole. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's great that you manage all of that. So how many connections have you got, Stuart? How many connections have I got? So I have to date... Uh, 4,193 connections. Nice, nice. And how many followers? Do you know what? When I, when, when I saw that question coming through, I thought, oh, I don't know, so I'll go and have a look. And I have 4,050 followers. What a lot of sad people that are out there. 4,050 <laughs> followers. Well, like so most most group. most of those are your connections? Yes. So, so, but hey, look, you put out some great content, right? You've got this fantastic story that's in this book. Um why wouldn't people want to follow you? A lot of followers from India, which is quite interesting. Um, and I had this conversation with another business owner, and he said that the Indian business owners, the entrepreneurs in India, have got this insatiable appetite for business knowledge. Um, so I think out of those 4,050 followers, about 800 of them are non-connections from India, which is really bizarre. Wow. That yeah, is that no, that is amazing. Yeah. But well, look, it's a, it's a, sorry, it's a great book. I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Um, so what's the highest number of views you've ever had on one of your uh, content posts? Very interesting one. I remember this post well, actually. So what will I tell you a bit, a bit about the post first? Yeah, carry on. Right. So I, I put a post up on LinkedIn maybe about four or five months ago um, about this this concept that I thought was going to work. And what, what it actually was, the year was 2055. So we're in the year 2055. And I've created this, this, this concept where you can actually walk in and you can you can see the stuff you want to buy. You can actually physically see it and you can touch it and you can buy it and walk out with it there and then. I mean, it's just ridiculous to even think about that. And we're going to call it a shop, Right. And there's going to be somebody in that shop that knows what the product's all about and can give you guidance, not, not live chat, but face-to-face. -face. And you're going to talk to him, and he's going to be called a shopkeeper. And all this will happen in 2055, and it's going to be the next biggest thing. And that post got 8,863 views. So, so hang on, you'll have to run this thing about a shop to me. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't get this concept. What, what do you mean? Yeah, so like, like, fantastic. The year was 2055. So it's, so it's really, a, so it's really a place that people can go and buy stuff. Yes, <laughs> 2055. Because I think you'll probably find that in you know not so many years' time that people will get fed up buying online. Absolutely, no, absolutely, and and I think, I think if you, you you look at different types of businesses. That, that are going online and stuff like that, there's still a hardcore of people that want to well, do what we're doing now. It's just, Absolutely. you know, get get feedback and, and just just be 
just be people just be human no, absolutely i love that i love that that's brilliant um what's the best time have you found for you to post on linkedin uh interesting one usually but it really depends what it is um businessy stuff tends to do better sort of tuesday mornings I think people are too busy on Mondays and too focused on other things on Fridays. So I tended to find that Tuesday mornings were good. However, um, as, you, as you'd expect from business coach, we test and measure everything. And anything that's got a personal slant to it. So I'll occasionally get a photograph of Monte in some, you know, chilled out mode. And I'll put that up saying, you know, um, we're ready for the weekend and these kind of things. And they tend to do phenomenally well on Saturday mornings. So business yeah. stuff Saturday morning, anything personal ish Saturday morning. So so a business Tuesday morning, personal Saturday morning. No, that's that's, inter that's an interesting concept. I like that. And um, I think I think uh weekend posting is there's not so much corporate stuff being posted yes. at weekend. So therefore so you're yeah. yeah. So so your stuff is 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 better heard. Um and people are doing things differently on social media. So uh, no good good top tips, sir. Um, and do you get business as a result of your activity on LinkedIn? Oh, that's a very good question. Do I get business as a result of my activity on LinkedIn? Uh, without a doubt, yes, but indirectly. Yeah, sure. Right. Sure. I, th I think Gavin had mentioned it in the comments, right? L LinkedIn works, you know, I, and I say this all the time, you know, the best way to sell on LinkedIn is never to sell on LinkedIn. Build, build the relationship you know, online, then take it offline. Um, and without a shadow of a doubt, every single bit of business that I've done as a consequence of LinkedIn has followed that, you know, making the connection, building a genuine relationship, taking the conversation offline, and then, you know, sometime, you know, I mean, sometime can be anything from, from two months to two years. But yes, it definitely works for business. No, absolutely. No, well done. Um, So, Thanks for all of that on your LinkedIn. So I, I want to know a little bit more about what you do and what type of customers you you work with. And and it it, it says says up on 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 LinkedIn here. You guide business owners through these challenging times. And oh my goodness, don't we have some challenging times at the moment? Indeed, we do. Not quite sure what happened. I think somebody ate a bat somewhere, and it kind of went kind of went downhill from there. It went viral. <laughs> yeah, it went viral. Yeah. So, so um so. You, you've, you've, you've you run a business you ran it for 20 years um yes. and, and and i'm not spoiling anything because because the business failed and so you've written this book and you've you've you've, you've you're coaching business owners you've, you've got this great marketing um concept that you're working on at the moment just tell everybody um about your piranha marketing and i want to know about this uh this poor bags all right okay so wow lots lots of stuff there so the book, first of all, How to Get Your Business, that came about because I had a, a very, 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 very successful printing business that I managed to destroy um, and it failed in its 20th birthday. And the book explains how that happened. Um, and the reason that happened, A, was because of well, me. Uh, but more importantly, the success of the business was masking a lot of the mistakes that were being made. So that's, that's really important. And that's where I fit into the market nicely now i work with business owners that are looking to get their business from maybe you know quarter million half a million up over the million mark heading towards two because that's 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 the route that i got massive success on and once we passed the two million mark it all started to go pear-shaped so that's really the book um piranha um piranha is a system that i created and it's all about marketing and the reason it's called piranha is because marketing is all about small, consistent bites. Hence the piranha, right? Lots and lots of small, consistent bites. Random acts of marketing. Lots of marketing and nothing. Lots of marketing and nothing. It just doesn't work. So the piranha planner was all about getting businesses much, much more focused on their marketing. And it really looks at their target market and you know why their target market would use them and what's the message to that target market? Mm. Where do they hang out in their biggest numbers? And it's, we created the piranha wheel, which goes right round, and it just digs really deep into a business long before we even consider spending a penny on marketing. And that confuses some of the clients because they want to start marketing straight away. 
and I'll say, well, we don't know your conversion rates. Well, we need to start marketing. We need to. I need to get. I need to get sales. We need to get leads. But we don't know your conversion rates. Well, what's that got to do with it, Stuart? Okay, let me you know explain it to you then. If you don't know what your conversion rates are, and you start a marketing campaign which generates lots of leads, lots of interest, and your conversion rates aren't where they should be, then what's going to happen with all that interest and desire you've created? It's going to go to your competitor. Oh, okay. So we need to look at the conversion rates first. So I was getting a bit frustrated, actually, with all this, right? So what I did was I looked at the whole Piranha Planner because it's, it's in four different sections. I looked at the Piranha Planner and I created a fictitious company, right? So we set up a dog food business and we called it Paw Bags, right? I even gave it a strap line, Fab Food. For your furry friend, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? So Paw Bags was fab food for your furry friend. And we started to build the Piranha Planner around around Paw Bags, right? And uh, Paw Bags, uh, the business owner was, was Monty, who's my dog. Um, so you were actually getting it from a dog's point of view as well. Um, <laughs> you know, you know, sometimes working with clients, it's like working with the dog, you know? Anyway, that's a different story. Long story short... We're looking at this and going, hmm, this could work. <laughs> hey, this sounds like a really fun business. So on the 1st of August, 10 days ago, pawbags.co.uk was actually launched. My wife actually started this business. And not unsurprisingly, because we're doing it right, it's absolutely flying. That is absolutely fantastic. flying. But more important, actually, guess what we're doing? Guess what we're having? Oh, that's a loaded fun. question. Fun. 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 Yeah. yeah. We're having fun again. That's that's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. And uh so uh I'll see if I can get that up on the up on the screen of the pull bags because that, that is just crackers. Well done you. There um, you go. So you 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 you're busy you're still busy coaching and, and, and helping clients. So how many hours a week do you currently work and, and uh you know what does that look does that work for you? It does actually. Um, the work-life balance now is more important than you know helicopters, Aston Martins. We've talked about this many times, right? Um, so I now work four days a week. Don't work Fridays. Um, and if I do work Fridays, I make damn sure it's through choice, not necessity. Yeah. Um, so work, working with the, probably the perfect number of clients right now. So it's a really, really good balance because obviously I'm working with my wife as well with paw bags. Um, so yeah, I mean it's 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 a it's a four day week. It's a fun four day week, and uh, we we get we get three days to to do other things. It's just that's the way that's the way business should be. No, absolutely fantastic. What challenges have you got for your business um, at the moment? What, what, what challenges are you facing? What challenges are we facing just now? Um, do you know what? Actually, there's not really that many challenges now because you know, again, from the from the coaching point of view, but we're very, very focused on doing SWOT analysis, right? Both personally and for the business, right? So we made very, very big, big steps with both businesses um, around the, the the weaknesses because today's weaknesses are tomorrow's opportunities, right? So the the biggest challenge we have got. With, with paw bags is really just starting to get the name established, right? Um, and at the same time, make sure we don't grow too quick because what we want to do is we want to make all the mistakes early, yeah. right? Um, and, and, you know, and get this a, a well-oiled machine. So uh, August, September, October for the, the first quarter of the business, it's all about just getting that established. Um, and then towards the back end of the year into 2022, really pushing it. So my, my biggest challenge is to make sure I don't sacrifice my Fridays off. No, good for you. Good for you. That's a that's a great attitude to have. Um, look, this is supposed to be a 15 minute interview. And I don't know why I asked you along, because there's no way I'm ever going to no, squeeze you gonna into never going to be 15 minutes. But I'm going I'm going to I'm going to um, sort of like bring it to a close now. So there's a couple of other questions here that um, for those of you that don't know, I, I, I try and get this flowing. And, and so everybody I interview knows the questions that are coming up. Um, what tip would you give your 16 year old self? Oh, we've got some questions coming in as well now. What tip would you give your 16 year old self? Do you know what? Actually, this this is this is going to surprise you because somebody asked me this a couple of weeks ago and was blown away by my answer. Actually, right, um, my and it's nothing to do with business, right? 
Um, my si if I was meeting my 16 year old self, it would be don't dick around, do the qual, play the game, get the qualifications at school, get the hires, go to uni, and get into the RAF as a pilot. Yeah, and that, that's what I would tell my 16 year old self. Well, having, having read your book, that's not a surprise to me. That really yeah, isn't a surprise that, to me. Yeah, there you go. Uh, fantastic. I like that. Um, so um, Odessa's got a question. What's been the biggest lesson for you now that you're having a go at running another business? What's been the biggest lesson for me is that it's been a painful one, actually. And it's very, very simple. If I had known then what I know now and implemented it, that business would never have failed. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a sore one. Yeah, that, that is. That is. Uh, look, you've got to read the book, guys, if, if you're watching this. Um, and you've got another question there, Odessa. Thank you. Um, what are you hoping pe readers will get out of the book? Oh, that's that's an easy one. Um, not to make the same mistakes I did. Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. Stuart, um, I've got a killer question, and, and this isn't on the script. Uh -oh. uh, yeah, sorry, mate. Sorry. Um, but but you know we've known each other a long time and and um, I've downsized and I and I, and I no longer longer live in a big house I don't have a, a, a big salary or a flash car or anything um, I live a simple life and I live near the sea um, and 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 people that know me know that I'm deliriously happy um, you've you've um, had the Aston Martin you've had the helicopter the the flash bikes and i googled that bike wow i'm surprised you're still alive but never mind that's another that's another story um and you you, you know you live in a modest house you live in a remote part of scotland um you live near live near the sea you've got a van not an aston martin um but are you happier now or happier when you had all the accoutrements of success See, that's that's an interesting one. If you're an outsider looking in, you would think happier back then, but it couldn't be further from the truth. Um, you know, all the what I call in the book the illusion of wealth, right? The Aston Martin, but the, the sad reality was you were so stressed to the eyeballs, you never get a chance to use it or appreciate it or enjoy it, right? Today it's slightly different, right? Really, didn't really couldn't care less about the Aston Martin. Um, and you know, too, too too many people that I know are no longer here with flying helicopters. So I'm not overly not overly concerned about that. But you're right. I mean, you know, we don't live near the beach. We pretty much live on it. Um, and you know, the reason for the van is when you've got a canoe, paddleboard, and a huge German Shepherd, the last thing you want is a car. Right? Yeah, exactly. The last thing you want is a car. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I knew that that was going to be the answer that you gave me. And I'm so pleased that you did. So, uh, Stuart, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. I knew it would be. Um, how could people get hold of you? How can people get LinkedIn? Absolutely. That's the right answer. LinkedIn, obviously. That's that's the one. Super. Thank you very much indeed. And, and I think um, Adessa absolutely sums it up. Um, it, it is it is all about simplicity so uh, it's a sh so. it's a shame we're at opposite ends of the country we could go paddleboarding together mate well we still can i've got the i've got the van i've got the dog have dog <laughs> will travel <laughs> uh stuart thank you so much for coming on it's been lovely to see you uh guys nice, thank nice. you very much for your questions and uh we are back next week with uh, we've got somewhere here. I've spent ages doing that. So let's see if that comes up. Oh, that's the background. So I need to put her as an overlay. We've got the lovely Lorraine is coming in next week. Um, she's from the, um, uh, I can't get rid of that one now. There it is there. Graham, you're blocking the thing. She's from the company. You'll know when you get there. And she knows all about um, uh, happiness and, and all that sort of stuff. So Stuart, Thank you so much. You've been an absolute star and um, see you all very soon, guys. Uh, cheerio next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Thanks, Ashley. See you. Thanks.